Hi, and welcome to question two of the 2022 Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. So as always, if you want to copy the notes and work on off, just send an email to shanetroy at gmail.com and like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So question two here is a probability question. Worth noting that part A and B are um, marked together and they qualify for 15 marks, which is, is a huge chunk of marks. So the question is saying, when Maeve's team plays a match, they can either win, <clears throat> we're going to use W for that, that's what they're telling us, they could draw, D, or lose L. Okay, so either win, lose, or draw. Now part A says, fill in the table below to show the nine possible outcomes when Maeve's team plays two matches. One is already done. Okay, um, that's the one here. They won the first match, drew the second match, and that, so that's all they're saying there. Okay, so if you see what's going on here, all we have to really do is, if they win the first match and win the second match, they're going to be win-win. Now, they gave us this one, win the first match, draw the second one, and then just win-lose. And then if they draw the first match, and win the second one, it's draw win. If they draw the first one and draw the second one, it's DD. And if they draw the first one, lose the second one, it's DL. So it's the same basic principle the whole way, um, just to make sure we fill it in. And the last one there is lose, lose. So that's the nine possible outcomes that could happen from playing two matches. So in a sense, this is a sample space, okay? Now, part B then says, Maeve thinks that each outcome in the table is equally likely. Based on this, find the probability that when Maeve's team play two matches, they win at least one match, and then give your answer as a fraction. So the probability of an event happening can basically be given by the formula. Now, I shall just use the answer here on the next one. The probability of an event occurring is the number of ways it can, can happen divided by the total number of ways, okay? Now, there's nine possible outcomes from the two matches. Now, the ones that have at least one win. So the first one there, okay, win-win has at least one win, okay? There's two, but there's definitely one. So we have one, then we have a win here, a win here, a win here. Now, no wins in the last two, a win here, and no wins in the last two here. So that's five of the possible nine outcomes. And they say give your answer a fraction, um, so it's five over nine. Now you could turn decimal, but they, they explicitly say leave your answer as a fraction. And it's worth remembering this probability formula. And I always bring it back to a simple example if I can't remember it. I go, if I flick a coin, how many things can happen with a fair coin? Well, two. If I flick it once, how many things will happen? Well, one in two, and we all know that like it's a one in two chance of getting heads or, or one in two chance of getting tails. Okay, so that's part A and B again, a big chunk of marks. Now part C here says, this is 10 marks, so again, a fairly big chunk of marks as well. Maeve's team play five matches in a competition. Work out the total number of possible outcomes for Maeve's team for these five matches. Okay, and they give an example of one possible outcome would be win, win, lose, draw, win. Now, if we were to try to do this out, like, like I don't know, like a, a tree diagram or something, you might have win, 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 win. Then win, 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 uh, lose. Win, 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 draw. And you keep going, okay? Now, it would be forever. It's not a good strategy because it just would take you a long, long time. If you think about this as saying is, okay, what's the, I suppose the number of outcomes and in the first match, okay, so I'm gonna say first match, you could win, lose, or draw, okay. So there's three outcomes, okay. Now that's gonna be the same for each different match. So there's a second match, a third match, a fourth match, and a fifth match. So the second one, you could win, lose, or draw. Now, so what you're basically saying is the first and second match and third match and fourth match 
and fifth match. Now, if you can see that, that that's what the, the question is, is basically getting across. And in probability, and means multiply, or means add. So because we, if you realize that it's the and situation, it's going to be three times three times three times three times three. There's three outcomes, and in the second match, there's three outcomes, and in the second match, third match, there's three outcomes, and fourth match, three outcomes, and fifth match, three outcomes. Now, three by three by three by three by three is the same thing as three to the power of five, which in the calculator will show you is 243. So in the notes here, I've done it the same thing. Hopefully, it makes sense. This is getting very tricky in terms of probability. Now, practice makes perfect. I struggle sometimes with probability, but again, practice makes perfect. So the result of match one, and we've, supposed to be, we've said already the result of two and three and four and five. But in each one, there's three possible things. But it's the and is important. Now, you could have, okay, uh, if you weren't sure, it's, it's going to be either and or multiply. If you'd added them, okay, you would have got that uh, 15, isn't it? 15 possible outcomes. If you remember what I said up here, like, if you were to iterate this, you'd have, like, the next one be win, 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 uh, maybe draw, win, 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 draw, lose, win, 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 draw, win. And then you go, there's so many of them, okay, that it's going to be more than 15. So if you weren't sure whether to multiply or to add, you could do both and put a line through the one you thought was least likely. There's a rule with the marking scheme that if something is, is correctly just visible on the screen, it should qualify for max, even if you've kind of crossed it out. So never tip X, never scribble out. Um, just put a line through it and brackets around it. And it's not the answer you're declaring, but if it's if it's valid, it should qualify for max. Now that's question two, part C. Now question D, Maeve's team plays 11 matches in a league. The table below shows the number of goals that Maeve's team scores in each of these 11 matches. So in the first match, they scored three, and then one, and one, and zero. Now it's part D says, work out the mean number of goals that Maeve's team score per match. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Now, I brought in the um, the formula from the math tables, but no harm reflecting on them if I can find it open. If I just drag this across. Okay. So this is a digital version of the math tables, and feel free to email me at shanetry at gmail.com, and I'll fire it off to you. Um, we're looking here for statistics and probability and the mean, and that's the formula you're looking at. So the second one is if you have a frequency table, like she scored like one goal, or the team scored one goal five times, the team scored two goals three times, and that's when you would use that. But we're more concerned here with the, the mean of a simple list of numbers. Okay, so let me go back. So the formula there is um, the mean is equal to the sum of the data divided by the number of data points. So in essence, we're just going to add all these. So it'll be 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 2 plus 7 plus 1 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3. Now they tell me there's 11 matches, so I should have 11 numbers here because it's very easy to, to lose one out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we're dividing that by the number of data points, which is 11. Excuse my bad writing. So this is the answer here in the in the notes. <clears throat> I've, I've written out the calculation. It's important to write out the calculation, even if you're doing it using the calculator, because it's very easy to input a number incorrectly in the calculator. And if all you have is the wrong answer shown, you'll get no marks. If you have the formula and then you do something wrong using the calculator, then, well, you, you'll be penalized, but you'll still get marks because you've shown that you are able to find the mean. You just the likely situation is that you just had an accidental input, which we're all guilty of. So I end up with 21 over 11. Now, they do say they want the answer given to one decimal place, so not in a fraction form. So I convert that to a decimal, and this is 1.9090909099 forever, recurring. Now, all that matters to me, though, is the second decimal place, and that is less than five, so the number before it uh, stays the same. And I have 1.9, and that's rounded to one decimal place. 
Place part D is a nice chunk of marks um, for finding the mean of a simple set of data. Now, part E here says complete the pie chart below to summarize the data above. Now, the data above, uh, I haven't actually put in here, but we'll flick back to it, um, showing the proportion of their games in which Maeve's team scored zero goals, one goal, and so on. Label each sector and the size of each angle. So if I flick back there, okay, so how many times did she score? So there's 11 options. She scored, or the team scored zero goals twice, okay? So that's two elevenths of this pie, the circle. Now, to find out how many degrees that is representing, I multiply by 360, okay? Now, I can put it to the calculator. I think, if I recall the answer, it's 65 degrees, okay? In fact, I should use the calculator just to double check that. Um, let me see. So, it's 2 fraction 11 times 360. Which gives me a fraction, which I draw into a decimal, is 65.45. I can round that. That's 65.45 is closer to 65 than it is to 66. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at 65. And that one there is, I'm going to make a record for myself. Okay. That is zero goals. Now, how many times did they score one goal? Okay. So one, two, three, four times. Okay. So the same thing again, we're going to do, have to do it for each number. So it's 4 out of 11 times 360. Okay, I can go back to the calculator and just change. What did I do there? What did I do there? I'm using the keyboard of the computer, so I have to retype it in. So it's 4 over 11 times the 360 and change that to a decimal. I got 130.9, which is roughly one, around up to 131. And that's for one goal. Spell goal, right? Now, in the notes here, I've done the same thing. Okay, so for zero goals, one goal, two goals, three goals. And then if you notice, there's no four goals. Okay, so there's, you know, there's no five goals, no six goals. And in... Um, just notice I made a mistake there. Now I fixed that problem there, okay. Um, and the seven goals only happen in one game. So that's one eleventh times the 360 gave me 33. And then whatever way you start from your center, okay, you're going to measure, in this case for two goals, I've measured 65 on the protractor, and then move my protractor and measure 33, and then again, whatever. I've made sure to label it with the uh, size of the angle clearly, okay. Now, I have to check the marking scheme in the, this is actually taken from the market scheme, this particular uh, image here. And they're putting in the name of it as well as the angle, which would make sense. How do you know which one it is? Okay. So an actual label for it, the, each sector and the size of the angle. And they will deduct a mark for not um, labeling it properly. Okay. Um, so that's the side pie chart. Pretty handy. Only five marks. An awful lot of work. Okay. Um, but look, you never know what the marks are going to be. That, I've seen times when the pie charts were 20 marks. Okay, so that's the end of question two. As always, if you want to copy the notes, just send me an email at shanetry.gmail.com and please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. See you on question three.